Welcome to the Healthier Home. Today we're going to talk about our cell phone and I'm going to show you lots of different strategies that we can use to really cut down on our EMF exposure from our cell phones. So there's lots of good reasons to cut down on our EMF exposure from our cell phone and there's lots of strategies that we can use to really limit our exposure. Now, the best thing you can do to cut down on your exposure from a cell phone would be to not use it at all. <laughs> now, this is something that probably isn't too likely for too many people to adopt. Um, over half the world owns a cell phone. The average amount of time that someone spends on it is between three and five hours per day. So they're a sort of a massive part of our society at this point. But there's certainly safer use practices that we can use to really cut down on our EMF exposure. And to figure out why that's such a good idea, you can look at the bio initiative report, you can check out this link on my website that goes to the giant evidence compilation that the Environmental Health Trust and the Children's Health Defense and a couple other groups put together in their recent court case victory against the FCC for wireless radiation exposure limits. So it was determined on August 13th of 2021 that our current limits are unsafe, aren't following the science on what safe exposure should be. So uh, that's a whole different thing, but if you are looking to cut down on your EMF exposure, it's a great idea. And I'm gonna show you some ways that we can do that now. So as we start to talk about some ways that we can reduce our EMF exposure from our cell phone, it's important to get our head around the fact that um, one, our cell phones are very high emitters of radio frequency radiation. They can communicate with cell towers miles away. That's signals coming out of our cell phone. Uh, they're receiving signals and they're sending signals. And the amount of information and strength of signals that they're sending when they are actively engaged in a call or a data download or browsing the internet, something like that, uh, they're much higher emitters during that time than if they're just sitting idle. So what we wanna do when we're chatting on the phone is not hold it right up against our head. So using a hands-free or speakerphone option is a great way to limit the exposure we're getting from our cell phones. And this is due to the fact that whenever we're talking about wireless radiation or radio frequency, radiation. The strength of that signal is really dependent on how close you are to the source of that signal. So if our phones are in a conversation and, they're, and we're talking on them, then they are very strong emitters. When we hold that right up close to our head on our ears like this, we're getting a very strong signal right into our brains. Not great at all. If you put it on speakerphone and keep it a few feet away from you, that's quite a significant difference already in the exposure that you're gonna be bringing into your body. And ideally, when we're using it on speakerphone, we're not gonna be holding it in our hands as well because then our bodies are sucking in all of that um, radiation as well. So keeping it far away from you on speakerphone is a great way to limit your exposure. And on that same vein, um, that's when we're actively engaged in a call or uh, or if you're streaming a movie or something like that, setting it up far away from you and not holding it while you're uh, watching that video, that's another great way that you can lessen the exposure. So it's really, um, really important that we are mindful of the distance that we are keeping from ourselves and our phone. So this goes when we're talking, goes when we're browsing, but it also makes a difference when the phone is just sitting there idle. Now, our phones aren't always um, sending out strong radio frequency bursts when they're sitting idle. They do it sporadically. They're constantly sending a beacon signal back to the closest cell tower so that the cell towers can know which cell phones are around and better manage traffic that way. But um, the cell phone is also looking for any wireless signals, any Wi-Fi to connect to, any Bluetooth devices. Um, they're constantly sending out signals, but in a sporadic way. So what we want to do um, if we're looking to lower our EMF exposure is keep our cell phones far away from us when we're just sitting at home, for example. So keeping it in a far corner of the room, keeping it, I mean, ideally it'd be 20 or 30 feet away, but the more distance, the better. So not keeping it beside you or on, on your lap or 
um, something like that, if you're looking to lower your exposure, keep it as far away from you as possible if you need to have it on. And there's also some other things that you can use as well that, that I use in, in our home. When I have my phone on in a corner of the room, um, I often put it behind this right here. And this is a pretty simple little device. This is called a radio fence, and it's just a plastic uh, picture frame with this thin metal mesh, this thin metal mesh inside. And this thin metal mesh does a good job of reflecting back a lot of that wireless radiation, those radio frequency bursts that are coming out of the phone. So you can have your phone set up behind that, and that's gonna be a great way to limit the exposure that's bouncing into your living space and affecting everyone around that space all the time. So how these work is you wanna think line of sight. So if you are having this set up, you wanna make sure it's set up in a way that the phone is, um, sorry, that the shield is between you and the phone. So if you can see the phone, if there's a direct line of sight between you and the phone, and this isn't between uh, the phone and you, then you're gonna be getting a full burst of exposure from it. Another great strategy, if we're thinking of keeping these phones uh, further away from us when they're on, when we are carrying our phone, a great strategy that we can use is turning it on airplane mode when we're carrying it. Now this means you're not gonna be able to use your phone, it's not gonna be able to receive or send any signals, uh, which is the whole point in <laughs> lowering our EMF exposure, is stopping that as much as possible when it's close to us. So using airplane mode when we're carrying it is a great strategy to really limit the amount of exposure we're getting. Because if we're carrying it uh, for hours a day, well, you're gonna be getting pretty strong bursts coming out of that sporadically all through the day when it is sitting in your pocket. And what we can do to get around that is um, put it on airplane mode. When you wanna see if you've missed a call or gotten a text or something, you can take it out of your pocket, flip it off airplane mode, put it down, let it sort of connect for a moment, check to see if you've missed anything, throw it back on airplane mode and put it in your pocket. And that's one strategy that you can use to uh, really limit some of your exposure as well that way. Now we mentioned the fact that phones are much stronger emitters when they are downloading, when they're streaming, when they're browsing the internet, when they're in actively engaged in a phone call. Now these are all heavy um, data transfer times and that's when the signals are gonna be the strongest. So something that we can do as well is when we are downloading a video and it's loading, if we are downloading a song or something like that, Keeping it out of your hands while it's downloading is a great strategy to limit your EMF exposure. And then once you've downloaded that video or even a web page that you wanna read or a song or something like that or a playlist that you can listen to offline, then you can turn it on to airplane mode once you've downloaded that information and then use your phone, watch the video, listen to the song or playlist and not have to be actively engaged in a data transfer at that time. Now this wouldn't work if you're streaming a song off a service or you know, um, actively engaged in going to a different website. Uh, you're not gonna be able to do that. You will need to be connected for those things. But if you can, in certain instances, download playlists for offline use, such as through Spotify or some of the other services that allow that to happen. You know, this takes some work and it takes some awareness and you really have to sort of be mindful of the fact of when your phone is on, what it's doing, how close it is to you. It takes some work and it takes this sort of mindset switch on these safer practices that are totally doable for most people. For all of this stuff that I've mentioned, uh, except for, for this, it's things that can be implemented right away. And it's just a safer use sort of practice and a knowledge on how to do some of these things that can really make a difference in your day-to-day -day exposure. Another great option for cutting down on the EMF exposure from our phones is using a wired ethernet connection to connect your phone to the internet, which is totally possible and pretty easy actually. So there's a few different adapters that you can buy to accomplish this. This is the one that I use, and so there, or I have a few of them actually, but this is the main one I seem to use. Uh, you put a live ethernet connection into there, you plug this into your iPhone in this case, and then you have internet to your phone. <clears throat> you can then flip your phone to airplane mode so it's no longer pumping out any signals, 
and you'll be able to use all of the sort of data features of your phone just as you would normally. So uh, browsing the internet, uh, streaming, all that sort of stuff. You wouldn't be able to make a call using your cell phone plan, but you could make a call through some of the apps like WhatsApp or Signal or things like this um, that use data. So you can't connect to the cell tower because you need to bounce a signal to the cell tower to be able to connect to that. So if you have a cell phone plan, it won't work with that uh, when you have it plugged in on airplane mode, but you will be able to use all the other sort of third party calling apps um, just fine. So that's a great option. They're not too expensive, 20 or $30 that you can get online. And you can find the links on my website for these. And they do a great job, really great job. And especially since people are using their phones for hours per day and we're using it right close to our body uh, either right against our stomach or right against our head then using a wired option like this if you're putting in a session of a couple hours on your phone this makes a huge difference in what your emf exposure is going to be like through the day now something else i want to mention is the emf blocking cell phone cases there is quite a few of them out there some of the bigger companies are defender shield and safe sleeve I personally use the safe sleeve one and I've used the Defender Shield as well in the past. They both work very similarly and there's some other ones out there on the market as well. I've tested both, def both Defender Shield and safe sleeve. They give me similar results. Um, these can be a good option. However, they come with a pretty big asterisk in that there's uh, some really specific ways that you have to use this because there's only shielding in this front part so if you are carrying it on your on your body uh, with the shield facing out then it's going to be bouncing the radiation back towards your body increasing your exposure um, so there's really specific ways to use this i go over all that in my other video here that uh, if you're interested in how to use these they can be a good option but please check out my video and see all the different ways that uh, you want to be mindful of when you're using one of these but it is an option as well and something else i want to bring up for safer cell phone use is not in relation to the radio frequency or the wireless um, exposure that we get from them but from another type of emf and that's going to be uh, in a higher frequency range and we're talking about blue light exposure and all the damaging effects that uh, excess blue light exposure does for our not only our full body but our eye health as well it can really impact our sleep it impairs our body's ability to adequately make melatonin um, it puts a lot of oxidative stress on our retina we're not really meant to be pumping our eyes full of blue light especially after sundown because the sun is highest in blue light midday uh, and it tapers off in the sunrise and sunset times, it turns more red and orange. And that's more what our bodies are used to. It primes our bodies better. Uh, it gets our circadian rhythms in flow. So really managing our blue light exposure is an important aspect. So I just want to mention that with our cell phones. Now, how we can get around the blue light exposure is there's a couple different ways. You can wear blue light reducing glasses, which are awesome but you can also lower the blue light on your phone. So here's my phone normally, my old phone, and if I uh, triple click there, it makes the screen red. And that really limits the blue light. So if you're interested in seeing how to do that, you can check out my other video on the shortcut that you can do uh, to change your iPhone to really be as red as you want it, and you can, you can change that. So lots of different things that you can use to limit your exposure to radio frequency radiation, which is a huge health concern. Being mindful of how we're using our phone, being mindful of how close it is to our body when it's actively engaged in, in its use, um, using hands-free talking, wiring it up, keeping it far away from us when possible, keeping it on airplane mode when we're carrying it, these are some great things that we can do to limit our exposure through the day. And it really does just take a mindset switch, start to understand what some of the things are, um, what some of the problems are with our phone and what some of the solutions are to help limit some of this exposure. It's totally doable and it's something that just takes a little bit of effort. So I hope that was helpful. And remember, the power as always lies with you. Thanks for joining me today.